Understanding the cow light. A cow light is a bedside button tethered to the wall in a patient's room, which directs signals the nurse's station. A call light usually indicates that the patient has a need or perceived need requiring attention from the nurse or the CNA on duty. The call light gives patients environmental control during the stressful event of hospitalization. Because call light systems are used to communicate patient needs to staff, the prompt answering of call lights directly affects patient satisfaction and perception of quality of care. Always answer call lights promptly and after providing care to reduce patient falls, please place the call light within the patient's reach. Understanding the bedpan. There are two types of bedpan, a standard bedpan, also called a regular bedpan, and a fractured pan, which is a bedpan that is flatter than the regular bedpan. The fractured bedpan are smaller than the standard size bedpans, having one flat end. These bedpans are designed specifically for patients who have had surgery or are recovering from, for example, a hip replacement surgery. This type of bedpan may be used for those who cannot raise their hips high enough or to roll over onto a regular size bedpan. Remember, the part of the bedpan that looks like a toilet seat is what goes under the buttocks. The other end should be between, well positioned between the patient's legs, preventing urine from flowing out of the bedpan and onto the bed. Shaving the resident. Hold the skin tight as you shave in the direction of the growth of the resident's hair. The razor should be held at a 45 degree angle and moved over the skin in short, firm strokes. Work downward over the cheeks and chin. Use the razor in the basin to clean it often when shaving cream builds up on the razor's edge during shaving. Remember, shave the beard on the cheeks and upper lip in the direction that the hair grows. Shave the beard on the neck against the direction of the hair growth. Wash off any remaining shaving cream. With clean water, wash the resident's face, dry the resident's face, and apply your aftershave or after lotion. MSDS is the abbreviation for a material safety data sheet. A material safety data sheet is a document that contains information on the potential health effects of exposure to chemicals or other potentially dangerous substances and on safe working procedures when handling chemical products. As a CNA, if you experience a chemical spill or a spill, you must consult the material safety data sheet prior to attempting to pick up or clean up the spill. Understanding the use of a gate belt. A gate belt is an assistive device which can be used to help safely transfer a person from a bed to a wheelchair. It can be used to assist with sitting and standing and to help the patient walk around. It is secured around the waist to allow a caregiver to grasp the belt to assist in lifting or moving a person. It provides 
a means to steady a patient at the center of gravity or to transfer a patient safely without pulling on the patient's body. You put the gate belt around the person's waist. Make sure it's always placed over the resident's clothing with the belt bunk buckle in front or off to the side. Never secure the belt buckle over the spine. You thread the belt through the teeth of the buckle. In any excess strap, you will tuck it. Be sure the belt is snug with just enough room to get your fingers underneath it. Understanding Urine Drainage Bags Urine drainage bag collects urine. The bag is attached to a catheter that is inside of the resident's body. The tubing from the catheter should always flow over the patient's leg. The urine drainage bag must be placed lower than the bladder in order to prevent reflux of urine back into the bladder. Never allow the urine drainage bag to touch the floor. It should be anchored to the bed frame and able to flow freely. When checking your urine drainage bag, if you notice that there is no urine in the bag, prior to reporting this to the nurse, check to make sure that there are no kinks in the catheter or the tubing and make sure that the tubing is flowing freely over the patient's leg and that there is no occlusion stopping the urine from flowing from the bladder to the drainage bag. This video demonstrates a person experiencing jaundice. Jaundice is a condition in which the skin white of the eyes and mucous membrane turn yellow because of high levels of bilirubin, a yellow orange bile pigment. Jaundice has many causes including hepatitis, gallstones, and tumors. How to remove dentures. First wash your hands and apply your gloves. If your upper dentures are present, First, have the patient to close their mouth and puff out their cheeks. This will help loosen the seal. Place your right and left forefingers at the top edge of the dentures on the right and left sides. Place your thumb on the biting surface of the dentures and rock them from side to side. Carefully pull downward. Turn the dentures sideways to remove and place them in the patient's labeled denture cup. If the lower dentures are present, you will repeat the same steps as above and remove the dentures by gently lifting upwards, then turning them side to side. Always remember to place the dentures in the patient's labeled denture cup. Understanding abduction pillows. Abduction pillows are used after the resident has had hip surgery. Abduction pillows are also called wedges. A certain kind of pillow used to immobilize a patient's legs just after hip surgery. It is made of a large thick piece of foam shaped like an acute triangle and it can be used when executing a log roll. The abduction pillow. Similar to our range of motion exercise, the abduction pillow keeps the legs apart. Understanding log rolling. Log rolling is a method of moving a person as a unit without disturbing the alignment of the body. You may use a pillow, wedge, or abduction pillow to prevent crossing of the resident's legs. In medicine, 
in particular in emergency medicine. The log roll or log rolling is a maneuver used to move a patient without flexing the spinal column. Patient's legs are stretched, the head is held to immobilize the neck, and usually there are at least three employees present in order to get this done properly. Understanding the safe use of razors. Remember, before you begin to shave a resident, you must first check with the nurse in the care plan. You check with the nurse in the care plan to assure that it's okay to shave the resident. You need to know if the resident is on an anticoagulant or a blood thinner. If the patient is on an anticoagulant or a blood thinner, you will use an electric razor versus the safety razor. If the patient is a diabetic, they heal slowly. You will also use an electric razor to prevent nicks. If the patient has dementia, this person can move suddenly without warning. This is another reason to use the electric razor versus the safety razor. Be sure to check the care plan prior to shaving a resident. If the patient is not on an anticoagulant, blood thinner, diabetic, or have dementia, it is perfectly okay to use a safety razor, which is pictured in the video. Understanding restraints. Restraints should be monitored every 15 minutes. Restraints should be removed every two hours. When restraints are removed, patients' needs are addressed during that time. Whether the patient needs eating, a change of linen, or hydration, any activities of daily living are to occur when the restraints have been removed. We monitor the restraints frequently because patients are at risk for self-harm when restraints are in use. Patients are at risk for accidental strangulation and death can result from strangulation of a resident in restraints. Patients can also be entrapped in their bed uh, due to the restraints. So we are monitoring our patients every 15 minutes to assure patient safety. Understanding, understanding the bed cradle. Bed cradles and footboards are devices that attach to the bed. The bed cradle keep sheets and blankets from touching and rubbing against the leg or feet of the resident. During your career, you may ask to get a bed cradle. A bed cradle is pictured in the video. Understanding the, the glucometer or glucometer is used to check your resident's blood sugar. A glucometer is or glucometer is the name of the instrument used to check your resident's blood glucose or blood sugar. You must know this information for the state exam. The glucometer or glucometer is used to check your resident's blood sugar. A glucometer is or glucometer is the name of the instrument used to check your resident's blood glucose or blood sugar. You must know this information for the state exam. A cold and hot compress must be ordered by the doctor. When using a cold or hot compress, you must monitor the patient's skin every five minutes. You must report to the nurse any signs of redness or irritation to the site 
where the cold or hot compress was placed. Understanding cyanosis. Cyanosis is defined as a bluish discoloration, especially of the skin and mucous membrane, due to the excessive concentration of deoxyhemoglobin in the blood caused by deoxygenation. Cyanosis is divided into two main types, central, which can occur around the core, lips, and tongue, and peripheral, which can occur around the extremities or the fingers. For example, if you notice that your patient in restraints is demonstrating cyanosis of their fingers or their hands, you would immediately release the restraints and you would call for help or notify the nurse immediately. Understanding the 24-hour urine. The 24-hour urine collection is a simple lab test that measures what's in your urine. The test is used to check kidney function. A 24-hour urine collection is done by collecting your urine in a special container over a 24-hour period. Usually this test is handled by the CNA. Make sure to have the correct urine collection container in a basin that's filled with ice. You also want to place a sign near the bathroom to notify other CNAs that a 24-hour urine collection is in place. You have the patient to void and the first void is discarded. After discarding the first void, collect all urine with understanding the urine strainer. Calculi, renal calculi, is another name for kidney stone. Calculi urine strainers are specially designed to catch even the smallest of kidney stones in the urine. The calculi urine strainer is a disposable funnel with the ultrafound fine mesh bottom that catches the stone while allowing urine to pass through unobstructed. The LPN or the RN that you are working with will notify you when the resident has an order for their urine to be strained. After straining the urine and you notice the stone in the urine strainer, please notify the nurse immediately. The glass thermometer is rarely used in the healthcare industry because it contains mercury. Mercury is poisonous to the skin. Special, proc special procedures must be taken if the thermometer is broken and the mercury spills. If your thermometer breaks and mercury spills, please call maintenance to get additional instructions on cleaning up the spill. Before using the glass thermometer, you must shake the thermometer down to 95 degrees. If you attempt to take the temperature and the resident is drinking something cold or hot and you're trying to take an oral temperature, you must wait at least 10 minutes before reattempting to take that temperature. Only insert the glass thermometer in the rectum for one inch. One tip of the glass thermometer is blue, which represents taking an oral temperature, and the other end of the thermometer is red, which represents taking a rectal temperature. For residents with difficulty swallowing, you may have to use thick it to thicken their liquids to help make swallowing easier and safer. If you notice equipment in the hospital has a frayed cord, you will not use this equipment. You will remove the equipment from the floor and tag the 
equipment, notifying others that the equipment is impaired, and you will also notify maintenance. Do not use a Dynamap or a blood pressure machine or any equipment that has a frayed cord. The tympanic membrane is located in the ear. Use a tympanic thermometer to assess the temperature or record the temperature from the ear. Remember fire safety. If there is a fire, you want to remember the acronyms RACE and PASS. You want to rescue the resident or patient immediately. You want to alarm others of the fire. You want to confine the fire by closing the door. And if the fire is small enough and you have an extinguisher, you would then extinguish the fire. In order to use the extinguisher, remember the acronym PASS. You will pull the pin. You will aim at the base of the fire. You will squeeze the handle while sweeping from side to side. Fire safety. Remembering the acronym RACE and PASS to keep your hand washing is the single most effective way to practice infection control. Remember to wash your hands before providing patient care, after providing patient care, and in between providing care from one patient to another hand washing the single most effective way to practice infection control daily inspection of your diabetic residents feet help your resident to sit down and remove their socks and remove their shoes Check the top, bottom, and all parts of the toes of both feet every day. Use a mirror to assist you if you're having trouble seeing all areas of the resident's feet. You want to check for blisters, cuts, sores, ingrown toenails, or places where the skin has been rubbed by the resident's shoes. Be sure to check the temperature. Do the feet feel warm, hot, or cold? Check the color. Do the feet appear to be in normal color, or do they look pale, red, or blue? Ask your resident, are they having any pain? Do you see any signs of swelling or any signs of infection? Have you noticed any dry, cracking skin? Any type of rashes or athlete foot? any corns or calluses. If you notice any problems, you want to notify the nurse right away. Assist the resident to wash their feet in lukewarm water daily. When shaving a resident that is wearing oxygen, you will use a safety razor. Once you have checked the care plan and verified with the nurse that the patient is not on a blood thinner, 
and the patient is not on an anticoagulant, it is okay to use the safety razor. Oxygen is highly flammable and we will avoid using the e electric razor for this reason to reduce the risk of igniting a flame while shaving our resident. When shaving a resident that's wearing oxygen, you will use the safety razor only. When shaving a resident if that your is resident states that they would like to harm themselves or if your resident is suicidal, you will take them seriously. You will stay with the resident and notify the nurse immediately. You remove any objects that the resident could use to harm themselves from their immediate presence or room immediately. Note that the resident will no longer use silverware, but will dine with plastic forks, spoons, and knives. When weighing your resident, make sure you use the same scale and you are weighing the resident at the same time. Weighing a resident. You must weigh the resident with congestive heart failure daily. Weight gain is the first sign that your patient or resident with congestive heart failure is getting worse. Patients can gain up to 10 pounds of extra weight from fluid before they actually begin to feel bad. Checking their weight daily is a key way to keep an eye on their symptoms. Weight gain is the first sign of retaining fluid. You want to weigh the patient after they have peed or voided on the same scale at the same time daily. You want to report a weight gain of three to five pounds to your nurse if weight gain is noticed. Remember, checking the weight is the key to keeping the eye on the symptoms of a resident with congestive heart failure. If you have a patient that has congestive heart failure, you should be weighing them daily at the same time on the same a scale. Low sodium diet. A low sodium diet is a diet restricted to foods naturally low in sodium content and prepared without added salt that is used especially in the management of residents or patients with hypertension, heart failure, kidney, or liver dysfunction. You want to make sure that the resident avoids foods like pizza and processed meats or adding uh, salt at the table. A low sodium diet. Anti-embolic stockings. Elastic stocking calls, TED holes, or anti-embolism stockings are used to improve circulation of the legs and feet and prevent the formation of blood clots. Elastic stockings should never be left on for more than eight hours at a time. They need to be removed every so often to allow for increased circulation. In some cases, the stockings will be left on for less than eight hours. Remember when applying elastic stockings, the patient should be lying down or in a sitting position. When removing elastic stockings, the patient should be lying down or in a sitting position. Elastic stockings may also be called TED holes or anti-embolic stockings. If you walk into your resident's room and your resident is unresponsive, they do not have a pulse and they are not breathing, you will call for help and initiate CPR immediately. 30 chest compressions 
in two rescue breaths for five cycles. If your resident is unresponsive and not breathing, you will call for help and start CPR immediately. 30 chest compressions and two rescue breaths until help arrives. The clear liquid diet. The clear liquid diet consists of clear liquids such as water, broth, and plain gelatin. Also, a popsicle is included in the clear liquid diet. These things are easily digested and leave no undigested residue in your digest intestinal tract. The doctor may prescribe a clear liquid diet before certain medical procedures or if a certain digestive problem is in place. The clear liquid diet. If the resident has a fall, If your resident begins to fall, do not try to stop the fall. Simply ease the resident to the floor. If the resident is a bariatric patient or resident weighing more than 500 pounds, you will move furniture and things out the way to prevent the resident from harming themselves. Residents frequently fall during shift change and the falls occur generally in the bathroom or the bedroom. You can prevent resident falls. You can help to prevent resident falls by moving throw rugs out the way and making sure that the call light is within reach. After the resident has fallen, you must stay with the resident and call for help. You must not assist the resident to get up from the file until the RN or LPN has done an assessment. If the resident has a fall, abdominal thrusts were once called the Heimlich maneuver. Abdominal thrusts attempt to clear the choking victim's airway by forcing air outward through the windpipe. The universal sign for choking is pictured in the video. You must first ask a person, are you choking before performing abdominal thrust or the Heimlich maneuver. Understanding the mechanical lift. There must always be two employees present to operate a mechanical lift. You must first check the weight of the patient and the weight limit of the lift. The weight of the person must not exceed the weight limit on the lift. Make sure the sling is the appropriate side for the resident. You want to make sure that the slings are in good working condition. You want to make sure that the lift is also in good working condition and that the lift has a charged battery prior to use. Remember, you must always have two employees present when operating a mechanical lift. Understanding nail care. In order to trim a resident's toenails, you must first check with the facility's policies to determine whether this task is within your job description. Some residents may have problems healing, therefore a specialist may be required to trim their toenails. Double check with the nurse and the care plan prior to trimming a resident's or a patient's nails. 
For an example, diabetic patients should see a podiatrist for foot care due to poor circulation and delayed healing. Remember, check with your facility's policy to make sure that trimming nails are within your job description and always check with the nurse and the care plan.